All right, today is September 7th. Okay, seven, one week into the month, and I'm super excited about this call because um, this is coming straight out of a personal development book that I just finished, and I was obsessed with it, and I felt like it came in the perfect timing um, because I really wanted to pass all this on. Um, because, as you guys know, this is the first time we're meeting in the brand new month. I know it's we're weekend, but technically, um, we met in August last week. It was the last day of the month, so um, I have a ton of awesome numbers, like I usually do, to go over with all this. Uh, go over with you guys today in regards to what we did in August. Um, raise your hand if you felt like August was a tough month. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys are going to be like pretty shocked when you see this then, because I feel like I say this every single month when we do one of these calls, this kick off of the month, I'm like, who thought last month sucked? And everybody's like, me! <laughs> and then that's like the best month we've ever had, number-wise. So I want to share this with you guys. We're going to get right down to it tonight, because I do have a lot of information I want to share with you. Um, so let me put this. You guys know me and my nerdy PowerPoints, so... Here we go. All right. First off, before I get started on this, I do want to shout out a couple of new coaches that I do see on here right now. Stephanie's on here. She's a brand new coach on our team. I think Amber, this I haven't seen you on a call before, I don't think. Welcome to our team. Um, looking around here, I think I got everybody. If I did not, I am sorry. Um, this is a Karen. I think this is your first team call too, isn't it? Okay, awesome. So it's really nice to have you guys here. It's so crazy. I say this every single week, but like a year ago, it was like literally me and like two other people on this call. And so every time I get on these things, I'm just like, oh my gosh, like how this happened in a year. It's amazing. And I just can't wait to see what's going to be like one year from now. So we'll talk about that right now. So I'm going to share this with you guys and let you guys see what you accomplished last month. Can I get a thumbs up if you see this? Everybody sees it? Perfect. Okay, awesome. So tonight we're going to be talking about the five categories of failure the 80-20 rule and how to be the best version of you, but we're going to start with our numbers first. Guys, this was the Success Club Board in August of 2015. Um, let's see here. Two people are still on the team today. This is what it looked like back then. Um, I remember being really proud this month of what our team accomplished, so that was awesome, but I want to show you guys this one. This one looks a lot prettier to me. This one's beautiful. Um, we changed, this, this was not updated before, um, I guess the Coach Online office updated a little while after that, um, after this came, I made this document. Um, I think Jackie and Georgia both finished at 10. Um, you guys can put it in the comment section if, you were, if your number is not correct, but um, this was a pretty crazy month, guys. I mean, look how many people we have. This was 88 just on this, but I know that that number went up. So I think we hit almost like nine, we had 90 something people last month, which is absolutely insane. Um, that's just challenge packs. That does not count the customers you guys signed up to. So we basically helped over 100 people last month, which is record breaking for our team. So congratulations on that. And congratulations to Sylvia, who was literally our, our brand new coach last month and is our top recruiter for the month of August. So congratulations on that. Huge, huge um, accomplishment. Changed 10 lives last month. All right. So let's talk about rank advancements for the month of August. We had Sylvia and... Um, Sammy both rank advanced to Emerald, and then we had Alicia rank advanced to Diamond last month, which was a huge thing for their team. So congratulations to those three people there. I'm excited to um, update this for next month because I know that we have a lot of new coaches on the team that are striving for these rank advancements, so I'm excited to see a bunch of new faces on there next month. Alrighty, look at all these new coaches that came onto our team in August. That's a lot of people. So Jody, Jen, Sylvia, Rox, Amber, Karen, Sarah, Brittany, Kelly, and Jessica, welcome to Team Simply Beautiful. We're super excited you're here. Um, everybody else that's not on this, it's because you came in September, and you'll be on the next month's PowerPoint. All right. Ashton is going to Summit for free. So congratulations. Ashton was a success starter last month, so that means that she hit success club in her first three months as a coach. So she is going to New Orleans absolutely free. I, I know you guys probably feel like I announced this like a month ago. It's because I did. And she hit success club on the first day of August. So I did announce it pretty early. So it feels like a forever ago, but technically is official as of this month. Guys, look at this team volume comparison. In 2014, the team, and I want you guys, I know a lot of you might not understand what team volume is at this point, but this is what we do collectively as a team, everything we sell. 
2014, our teen volume was 2,215. Um, 2015, 55, 26. 2016, look at that jump in a year. 23,728 teen volume points. What this is compiled of of people that stay on Shakeology, people are everything we sell as coaches, things like that. So this is what we collectively do as a team. The success club comparison was 47 in August of 2015, 176 in 2016. So if you guys don't think you're making an impact and this team isn't growing, you guys are very wrong because that is crazy. 99 comments underneath the July bell compared to 74 in July. That was crazy. Holy moly. That shot up real quick. That's awesome. So congratulations to you guys. We did change a ridiculous amount of lives. Whoa. Last month. So going over this really quick, you guys should all know this, but I'm just going to say it again. So um, September promos, all $140. They left all those same programs on special. So make sure you're just passing that on to your customers. It's the same things. Um, you guys get a really awesome, cool yoga mat if you hit Success Club this month. That should freaking pump you up because who doesn't want a yoga mat? Seriously? I'm just kidding. I mean, it's really actually a pretty good deal. Those things are like 20 bucks on the Beach Body, on the beach body website. So helping three people, they'll send you a yoga mat in the mail this month. So it's just another little incentive on how to, why do you should help three people. Um, I'm not going to go over all these. These are in our team uh, page. Under, If you click on our cover photo, all the dates to remember that you're seeing right now are located in that cover photo, so you guys can go there. Um, but because we have an Emerald to Diamond push happening this month, I am making sure that we're running a significant amount of coach opportunity calls this month. So um, there will be one basically every week this month. So if you have somebody that you want to plug into it, just let me know, or I'll be posting them in our team page, and you can add them to it. But Big things to know is that the Coach um, Office Mobile, it launched today. So you can go to, um, now you don't have to like log in on your phone and go to Coach Online Office and that whole long process. You guys can literally go to coach.teambeachbody.com on your cell phone and then like make it a home screen little button and it'll bring you right there. It makes it so much easier rather than trying to navigate to that online office via your cell phone. Um... Core to Force Sneak Peek, our brand new program. This is like a MMX, like kickboxing program. It's like legit. I don't know if you guys can see me in my little box. I'm like doing those like moves. Um, yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be probably one. If you guys liked 22 Minute Hardcore, you are going to love this program. Um, so I'm going to tell you right now, I was a huge fan of 22 Minute Hardcore. Best program I think I've done in a very, very long time. Core to Force is going to be fierce. So September 22nd, um, we're, there's going to be a sneak peek on Beachbody On Demand for that. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing for a second and preface all the stuff that we're talking about tonight. So how many of you guys are wondering why the hell I'm wasting your time to talk about failure? Good. It's going to be a good subject. Okay. Um, failure. How much, how many of you guys are scared of that word? Because I remember if you're my personally sponsored coach, I have a coach, a new coach questionnaire for each single, every single one of you. And I went through it today and underneath of the, what are you most concerned about? I saw a ridiculous amount of the word failure. And I want you guys to understand that the book that I read today, this past time, I realized there's only five types of failure in business. There's five types. Everybody's always like fail forward, right? Fail forward and there's no such thing as failure. There is such thing as failure in business. And I'm going to tell you what it is today. It's not the failure that you think it is. So what we're going to talk about are those five objects of failure. So be ready to take some notes on this because this is, this is good stuff. Um, we're going to talk about the five categories of failure. And then we're going to branch it into the 80-20 rule. And then, like I said, I'm not going to keep you guys here all night. I want you guys to be engaged in this and ask questions and share your thoughts along the way. I'm going to preface this by saying, guys, you're gonna, there's going to be something that I say tonight that might sting a little. You might, might resonate with you. It might be something that you feel like when we talk about these five categories that you're dwelling on. Because when I read this, there was one category that made me sick to my stomach because I realized that was what was holding me back. But the cool part about this, and I'm going to share my screen with you guys right now, is that realization is the first step in making the change. Because the moment we figure out what's holding us back, we can move forward. 
So I'm going to jump right in. So the first category of failure is called the dreamer. This is the talker. And I want you guys, you don't have to post if this is you, but I want you guys to identify if it is. This is the talker. These people spend their days dreaming about what they would like to do. They dream about the perfect job, the perfect situation, etc. With them, the dreaming never stops. They're going to be the ones that build a large following with people that start to hang on to their every word on social media or with them because all these people out there, they're talking the big game, right? They have all these dreams for their life. So they're bringing all these people in. But the problem with the dreamer is that it usually stops with the dream. They usually talk a big game and they don't do anything. These people might be the people that have hundreds of thousands of followers on social media. They might get 300, 400 likes on posts talking about their dreams, but they never act on it. Um, they're the people where they're talking the big game, but their life isn't changing. Everything is still staying the same. They feel like they're in, like they're stuck when they're in a block of some sort. Um, I loved how she mentioned in this part that their energy, they, they, place, they put all their energy in trying to build a following rather than trying to live out that dream. That is failure number one. When we put too much emphasis on the dream and not enough emphasis into action. Number two is called the lurker. Now this person sits back and watches what other people do. These are the people that are waiting for the perfect time or the perfect sign that tells them it's okay to finally make that post. It's finally time to friend request five people. It's finally time to send that invitation. But guess what? They're going to keep waiting and waiting and waiting and they never take action. They don't ever send those friend requests. They don't introduce the business opportunity. They don't read the personal development. They have a little bit of that dreamer inside of them because they're sitting back and watching what the other people are doing. Um, and they're sitting back and they're wondering how they can do it as well, guys, but they're never moving forward. Nothing ever happens because they never take action. Number three is the hater. This one is my favorite. Deep down, this person feels angry about the success of other people. I have dealt with many of these people before. They're desperately trying to find a problem with someone else's success. They like literally physically cannot be happy for someone else. They're the person that whenever I introduce a new coach as an Emerald coach in our team page, that doesn't like the post or is, oh, I'm just, I'm sitting back here and I just, I, they're just, they're finding reasons to be unhappy with it. They can't support somebody else. When they see other people reaching their goal, they feel like that person is not deserving. On some level, they feel like hard work is the key to success, but the harder they work, the more they seem to fail. And you guys might wonder why that is, but unless, and I put it in all capital letters, until they are able to be happy for someone else, they will never find success of their own. I'm gonna say it again. Until you are able to be happy for someone else, you'll never find success of your own. This is a category um, in the book mentions that it's very easy to see in other people, but it's very hard to see in ourselves. So it takes a lot of recognition. Like, do you feel whenever you are on social media and you see that one of your, your fellow coaches rank advanced, how are you feeling? Are you excited for them or are you better? When one of your coaches posts about how they left their full-time job, are you excited for that person or are you bitter? We need to ask ourselves this because this is a failure. By acting like that, we are doing nothing but holding ourselves back. We need to be making sure that we're happy for other people, even strangers, guys. Happy for even strangers, even the people we dislike when something good happens for them. Because again, I'm going to say it one last time, until you're able to be happy for someone else, you'll never find success of your own. Because guess what? Internally, you're not happy with yourself either. Failure number four is the pessimist. You may have had goals, but you didn't move forward because, in quote, 
it probably won't work out anyway. These are the people that see the glass half empty instead of half full, basically in a nutshell. They may have had goals and they didn't move forward because they wouldn't work out. They're finding all the reasons why it wouldn't work. They're stressed out about those things. They're not focusing on the good things that could happen if they tried. They're focusing on the fact that, in quotes, nothing works out for me, right? I mean, do we all know people like this? I'm pretty sure everybody can pick out somebody they know that is a very big pessimist. So the pessimist, the way that their mind thinks is that it's better to not have tried than to try and fail. When that's not the case, right? We're failing when we don't try. But they feel like if they try that they'll fail. So they therefore, guess what? They never try. What's that do? That holds you back in business. Failure. And number five is called the judge. This one is what most of the population struggles with. Because you judge others, you're fearful that others are going to judge you. And guess what? We're the hardest judge on ourselves. So how many of us out here on this call right now are scared about what other people think of our posts? Are scared about what other people are going to say when we message them? Are scared that we are so nervous that we're going to get a message back and somebody's going to be basically telling us to F off? That people are going to see us as salesy. Guess what? If you're seeing yourself that way, guys, they will see you that way. This is what the majority of the population struggles with because we are so damn hard on ourselves. Every single one of us struggles with this one the most. This is the one that really opened my eyes. When you stop judging others, what others think about you no longer matters. And when I say when you stop, oh, stop judging yourself, when you stop judging yourself, what others think about you no longer matters. Because I can sit here all day long, guys, and I can tell you all day that, guys, they're not annoyed with you. They're not annoyed with you. They, they're not going to tell you to screw off. You're not annoying people. That post was a good post. But unless you're, if you're still sitting back there thinking and overanalyzing everything and judging yourself, that doesn't mean anything. What I say doesn't matter. We grew up knowing, knowing that we weren't supposed to do certain things, right? Or behave a certain way because we didn't want people to talk about us. And guess what happened because we grew up that way? It obviously transformed into our, into our adulthood, right? We don't want people talking about us, so it literally terrifies us. Every move we make, everything we do paralyzes us because we are deathly afraid of the fact that somebody might not agree with what we have to say. And isn't that sick? Isn't that sick that we all live our lives that way? Because what is it doing? The reason this is called a failure in business is because this is what holds so many people back. How many of you guys can openly admit, and guys, this is a very honest place. This is a no judgment zone. How many of you could openly admit that you guys would probably go hand skis in this business without you feeling that people were judging you? I mean, you don't have to read, you don't have to but think about it. We need to be sitting back here and thinking about the fact that it's all internal. <laughs> the way you're feeling is all in your own head. No one's thinking that about you. You're thinking that about yourself. We unconsciously, and this is like, I love this, I highlighted this, we unconsciously judge everyone and everything. We, like our brains are just like programmed to start judging things. <laughs> like the girl's outfit that walked past us in the mall. That bride's wedding ring. The way that this person styles their hair. Being non-judgmental is something that we literally have to focus on and practice every single day. It's a behavior, like I just said, that has been ingrained in us. And I love this part too. When others don't look the way we expect or act the way we expect, when they say something that doesn't seem fitting or dress in a way that isn't against, isn't the societal norm, we start judging, right? When if it's not in our realm of things. So for a lot of people, Beachbody is not in their realm of things. It's outside of what they're used to. It's outside of their norm. 
So it's, it was outside of our norm at first too. And this is why new coaches specifically have so much trouble posting on Facebook. Now I'm going to be honest because we're in our own heads. 28 months in like me, you just don't give a shit anymore. But as a new coach, I completely get it. I completely get why it's scary at first because it's outside of your norm. You're not used to putting yourself out there like that. So you're in your own head judging yourself saying, if I talk about this, if I talk about this part of me, people out there are going to judge me. Guess what, guys? No one's judging you but you. <laughs> you're judging yourself. Basically, we're judging ourselves. We're ju when judging others with or with the tendency to judge others comes the fear that others will judge us. So you guys might see somebody post something on social media. How many of you guys, are, and to be honest, I want to see show of hands here. How many of you guys are friends with Beachbody coaches that are not on our team? I'm looking through really quick. How many of them post things that annoy the shit out of you? Okay, because there's a lot of people out there. Or maybe, how about like people that are in other network marketing? Like It Works or Thrive or things like that. Annoy the shit out of you? So guess what you're doing right now? Because those people exist out there and they're doing it the wrong way, you're automatically assuming that people view you in that same group. Isn't that sick? <laughs> Isn't that sick that we do that to ourselves? But here's the thing, if you guys know every single day when you go out on social media that you're out there to inspire somebody, you're out there to uplift somebody, you're out there to change someone's life, then the only person out there that you need to be worrying about is yourself. And here is a quote that goes along with this. I rarely have someone judging me or my services, and if I do, I don't know it because I am too busy building up others and what they have to offer. Boom! Right there. Done. Woo, that gives me goosebumps. Every time I read it, I printed it out, it's on my desk. You'll never know if somebody has anything bad to say to you because you're so wrapped up in doing what is right. You're doing something that's going to change the life of somebody else, guys, and that should fire you the hell up. You have a gift in your hand. You can give somebody a golden opportunity by the coaching opportunity or a challenge pack that can change their lives. So don't give a shit, but you're not going to ever notice the people judging you because you know what you have to offer is so awesome, and you know that you're building up other people and what they have to offer. And guys, oh my God, it's, it's, it's game changing. If we can focus on this, you'll never think about somebody judging you because you're doing this and you're focusing on the people that matter. Man, woo, that gives me the goosebumps every time I read it. I love it. Love it. So I'm going to skip to the next part. So now that you guys know the five failures in business, um, and like I said, this, that was something that was more of a, um, I'm going to, uh, it's called Shut Up and Do the Work, The Entrepreneur's Guide to Creating Massive Success. Fantastic book. It's only like 46 pages long. It's or not 46, like 100 pages long. It took me like 45 minutes to read it. Fantastic book. Um, and I'm only touching on a very small part of it. So this would be a great book for you guys to read. So now that we've do done talking about the five failures, now we know, I, mean, I hope at this point, did, if you guys related to one of those failures where you need to work on, right? We know what we need to work on. So now we're going to talk about the 80-20 rule of success. Success is based on an 80-20 rule. Whoa, I don't know why that does that. 80% of our success is our mindset. 80%. Did you guys think it was the opposite way? For the action? 80% is our mindset. 20% is the action that we take. So guess what? You can do your power hour every single day. You can add people to Facebook. You can invite people. You can do all this. But if you have a shitty mindset, none of that matters. People can see right through you. 80% of our success is, is our mindset and the work that we are doing in our mindset. People study entrepreneurs, guys. People study the very successful people, the rich people in this entire world, and every single person says the same thing. We talk about all the action we're going to take. I hear this on every call that I do with every personally sponsored coach I have. I said, what are your goals this week? 
and they list out this all these incredible amount of goals and all these things they want to accomplish, but no one ever says the work they're going to do on themselves. And I'm guilty of this too. I have a, and I'm going to show you guys this when we get, when I stop screen sharing, I have a three page list of goals for this month, breaking it down by week. And I realized today, and I was making this PowerPoint for you guys, that I did not incorporate any sort of personal development plan in there. That's ridiculous. The mindset work we do is critical to achieving our goals. So like I said, we can have a th I can have that three-page list of goals all I want. If I have a shitty mindset, then um, those goals matter. So in addition to taking the, mass, the massive actions that we're taking every single day, we must spend even more time on our mindset. And guess what? We're focusing on our mindset takes that much more effort. It is hard to change a negative mind. Very hard. It is hard to change your thinking habits. And I'm not telling you guys this is going to happen tomorrow. I'm not going to say one personal development book is going to change your life. But I'm going to say a small little a small chapter a day, a little bit extra every single day, making the conscious effort to do this every single day will help you change your mindset. I'm gonna give you a couple action steps right now. Creating the world you desire. Number one, you need to let the world know exactly what you want. And you must be specific. Um, I talk to my personally sponsored coaches about this all the time. Vision is so crucial, guys. A divided mind, I love this quote too, a divided mind is one that will never accomplish what it truly desires because it doesn't know what it desires. So until we're very freaking specific on what we're looking for and we're writing it down, we're making it clear to the world, we have this vision statement, we're pushing for that every single day, our mind doesn't even know what to focus on. It doesn't even know what it wants. A divided mind is one that will never accomplish what it truly desires because it does not know what it desires. I just lost track of my notes, so I just got off on a tangent. So again, you must be crystal clear on what you want in life. So that leads into number two, is you're setting goals that are gonna help you get to that reality. So at first off, right off the bat, in that 80%, right now you're talking about what you want. Do you want this little picket house with your husband? Do you want to be debt free? Do you want to be, do you want, I think, who was one of my first sponsor coaches? I think it was Lindsay. Do you want a pig? <laughs> Lindsay even said it. She put it on her vision board. She wants a pig, okay? And I thought that was freaking awesome because she was so damn descriptive of what she wanted. When are you paying off that debt, right? What are you ranked? Are you walking across the stage at Summit? What do you, what, where are you at in the next two years of your business? We need to be, that's your vision. Now it's time to set goals to help you get to that reality, right? So once you do that, you're gonna, this is how it's gonna get you closer to establishing that mindset. So now, okay, great, now we have this vision for our life. Now we have the goals that are gonna help you get there, which again, you're gonna work with your upline coach to make sure that you know exactly what this is, guys. I'm not telling you to, Go out there and do this on your own. If you need the help, that's what your upline's there for. And that's what this whole mentoring program that I'm doing with my personal sponsor coaches is right now. You're going to set that. But next, guys, is number three, and this is huge. We need to get clear on what we truly believe about accomplishing the things you said you want to accomplish. If you do not believe that you can accomplish it, then those two those num steps number one and two are pointless. And there's going to be limiting beliefs in your way. There's going to be things, like I told you, that we were told when we grew up that are going to be stuck in our head that are going to interfere with what we want. Um, for me personally, I use one where to be a six-figure earner, that means working basically for the rest of your life. In order to not have to work every day, you're going to be working until you're in your 60s, right? That's how long you have to wait for retirement. We have all these beliefs that we were told as we were growing up, and we need to identify those. So all those goals that we just set for ourselves, what beliefs do you have that are tied to that? And you need to be extremely honest with yourself. We need to be identify the beliefs that we're holding around our goals and what it's going to take and what it will take to accomplish them that do not truly support what we want. 
So they may need changed, right? Because if you have a goal and they give all these beliefs around it, like I'm going to show you an example in a second, you need to make that change and then you have to repeat it to yourself every single day. A belief is simply a thought you keep thinking over and over again until it becomes the truth. That's what a belief is. And that's what I want you guys to have in your head. I, and that's why I tell you guys to write out your goals and I am's, right? Not just, I want to be a two-star diamond. I am 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 a two-star diamond every day, all day, every day. Guys, I have sticky notes and Zach wants to kill me. I have sticky notes all around my house. You open up the damn cabinets in my kitchen and it says, you are a 2016 elite coach. I open up the bathroom and it says, your team is elite. And then I open, I go into my office and it says, elite, 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 everywhere. Because I have no doubt in my mind that our team is going to achieve that this year because that's how strong my belief is. A belief is a thought until you keep thinking it over and over again until it becomes the truth. So now we have a vision. We know what we want in the future. We have set goals to help us get to that reality. Now we're telling ourselves this over and over and over again and making sure we believe it. Here's an example in regards to redoing that why and redoing that belief. Just say your desired goal is to make $100,000 this year. Your, the original belief might be, remember how I told you guys that things are going to be ingrained in your mind on what you think is going to prevent you from getting there. I will need to work with thousands of people at low prices to create a six-figure business. We need to change that belief. I can create a six-figure business working with a small number of people who are excited about their growth in their personal business. And then you would sell yourself that over and over and over again. So you guys see what I did there? I took the belief that was limiting what I thought I could do with my life and changing it into something that was empowering. Something I can say over and over again. So this can go for any goal. I want to quit. I, I will leave my full-time job. I will need to make 700 blah, blah, blah dollars a month in order to quit my full-time job. Or make a belief that's going to inspire you and put it into action and say it out loud every single day. Does that make sense? Part two, so number four. So we have the vision, we have the goals, we have the beliefs. Four, surround yourself with positive people that support your dream, not the ones that are feeding the bad habit you're trying to get rid of. So I have a lot of my coaches that talk about how happy they want to be. If you're surrounding yourself with negative Nellies, how hard is it for you to be happy? I love the way that she put this, and I'm going to read this to you guys really quick. She compares it to someone addicted to drugs. If you're in an outpatient rehab facility, you may go into rehab for an hour or two a day. When you go home, you can't go back to the same surroundings that helped create the addiction in the first place. Right? She recommends not spending more than 30 minutes a week talking to someone who has a similar thought process to the one you're trying to get rid of. I am not, I'll tell you guys this, personally, I do not hang out with, I can't be talking to somebody for a long period of time if they're just being negative. Because I used to be a very negative person. And like, whenever I hear somebody start complaining, like this little tweak in my head, I'm like, I gotta, I gotta complain too. So we want to surround, surround ourselves with people that uplift us. And I think that's what's so great about Beachbody, guys, is that we do have those people within our teams. Is that whenever we do feel like we're, we're struggling in business or we're struggling personally, we have each other. We have each other to lift each other up. So you're going to want to spend your time with the people. They're going to lift you up, not tear you down. And last but not least, the thing that I tell you every single day. Read books or listen to podcasts surrounding your new beliefs. So you have this vision now, you have your goals, and you're reprogramming your brain to believe these things, that these things are possible for you. So if you want to be a five-star elite coach, you're probably reading books on leadership. If you want to be a happy, positive version of yourself, you're reading books on confidence. Personal development is so huge. And I wrote this again. This work is going to take days, weeks, and months. Reprogramming your entire brain is not easy. And then I love the way she mentioned this too. She says that whenever it happens, you won't even notice it. You'll just see the change in your finances. It's pretty awesome. 
because you're going to start noticing that stuff. So what is the 20%? The 20% is the massive action. Many people take action without truly knowing what to do on a day-to-day -day basis in their business. And this is because they didn't take care of the 80%. They have zero freaking clue what they're working for. <laughs> it's true. Because if you know what you're working for every single day, you can make the small goals, the small plans every single day to get you closer to your big goal. When you follow the 80%, you're operating on a clear mind. And the 20% just takes care of itself. So because you are so focused on that reality that you want for yourself, you know exactly what you need to do to get there. Focusing specifically on what you want, seeing yourself with it, keeping an eye on the prize, and believing you can have it. The work doesn't matter if you don't believe in what you're working toward. So, I mean, I know I'm looking on here right now. A lot of you guys are in our diamond push right now, right? And I asked them this in the group, and, and I, I, know they, I know they said yes, but a big chunk of this comes with believing that you can actually attain it. What are you shooting for right now in your business? Are you shooting for Emerald? Are you shooting to make $100 a month? Are you shooting just to help 10 people a month? Are you shooting to become a diamond coach? Are you shooting to be a star diamond coach? Are you shooting to be an elite coach this year? Well, great, that's awesome, but you better believe that you can do it or you're not gonna achieve it. I mean, it's as simple as that. So the reason that this whole thing incorporates into our five failures is because people fail in this business because they're doing 80% action and 20% mindset growth. The end. We have all those things. We have you and hustle all you want, but if you're not focusing on what is holding you back and trying to improve them, or have your eyes on the dream, it does not matter. It doesn't matter. Blunt, but true. And all the, those five failures that I talked about at the beginning of this call, if that is something that you are struggling in right now, if you find yourself intertwined in one of those, I'm begging you to read personal development, to find a way to change your beliefs to get you through it. We don't have to hate other people because they're successful. We don't have to be so scared to post something in fear out of judgment. We don't have to be the person that makes all these dreams and goals and never follows through with them. We don't have to be those people. We don't have to be the people that sit back and watch our upline coach fly through this business and then never take action either. We don't have to be the dreamer, the lurker, the pessimist, the judge, the, what's the other one? I forgot it already. Um, we don't have to be those people. Focus on where you're struggling right now, guys, and that's where you need to improve. And then you take action in regard to your 80%, which is your mindset growth. And then you incorporate the things in that you need to do. Say yes to your desire. No one is going to stop you but you. When you want something bad enough, you will do whatever you have to do to make it happen. I want you guys to think right now, identify something that you wanted so bad in your life. Whether that be graduating college, a man. <laughs> what did you want? Did anything stand in your way of getting it? I mean, it could be anything. I remember the night that I met Zach. I remember the first time I ever saw Zach. I saw him across that bar and I went right up toward him. No fear, no judgment, nothing stood in my way because I wanted it so damn bad. I wanted him so damn bad. That's a really uncomfortable example. But that was my point was to tell you guys that when you want something, you will go through fire. You won't give a shit about what other people say. You'll get out of your own way because you want it that bad. So my question to you guys is, is how bad do you want this? What is this dream life that you have for yourself? Because guess what? Team Beachbody can help you get there. You might not realize that yet, but it can happen. Financially, spiritually, emotionally. My whole life has been turned upside down since I found this. In a good way. So, that was quicker than it usually is. But does anybody have any thoughts about this? Questions? Was that a lot? 
<laughs> I'm looking through the chat right now. Oh, yeah, and I'll give you guys that title of that book one more time. That is Shut Up and Do the Work, The Entrepreneur's Guide to Creating Massive Success by Stephanie Sinclair. Yeah, then Ashton said I had to leave my office today because of one of our therapists was talking negatively about one of her clients. See, and guys, I mean, it's, it's just toxic. <laughs> it really is. And then all of a sudden you start thinking about, oh, yeah, remember that girl that I signed up? She's a bitch. And then your mind goes in all these other places. It's, like, ridiculous. It's toxic. So great book. Like I said, it was an easy read, and it really inspired the hell out of me. Um, as you guys saw, I had to share it with you guys because I felt like it was something that a lot of us are dealing with, especially in the judgment area. Um, we're really scared. We're scared of what other people are going to think and it's holding us back. So anybody have any thoughts, concerns, questions that need to be about that topic while we're all together? Let me take a sip of water. All right. Well, I'll let you guys go early tonight then. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, oh yeah. So our success club board is already looking fantastic for the month. Um, team truly you, dear heavens, you guys are killing it on that board this month. It's so awesome to see that. Um, we have a lot of, um, a lot of coaches already on the board, which is super awesome. Um, I'm excited to see, I'll be posting that tomorrow so you guys can see where everybody is. A lot of brand new names on the board, which is super cool too. Um, so we'll make sure that we get that up tomorrow. Um, make sure that you guys are shouting out your coach's success as well as your own success in our team page on Thursdays. As you guys know, it's payday um, and we have a lot of things to celebrate on Thursdays. It is our big day of the week to celebrate. Um, I am going to shout out, let me see while I can really quickly. Again, I talked about Sylvia being the top recruiter last month. She also is going to be having a nice, um, beautiful paycheck tomorrow, which I'm sure she's super excited about since she's getting married next week. Um, Stephanie's coming out post, fantastic, awesome. I know she's doing a lot of work behind the scenes right now to help her first couple people, and it's, it's super awesome. Um, Jess and I and every single person that has been going on these calls with me, the mentoring calls, I am like so fired up about these goals that you guys set for yourself. If you're one of my PS coaches and you have not done one of those with me, please do. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about what we're doing together and what we're going to be accomplishing on our team the next couple of months. Um, I'm out of breath, so I'm going to let you guys go. I've been talking for over an hour now. <laughs> I have a headache. I give myself headaches when I speak. Um, so you guys, let's have another fantastic week. I'm going to get a guest speaker for us next week again. So we'll be back to those. Um, but yeah, let's make it an awesome week. Stay inspired. And I'm excited to see what your takeaways were for this call. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a good night.